everyone and welcome back to English with Lucy. Today, after all of your requests, I'm doing a grammar video and I wanted to talk to you about something that even I, an English teacher, struggle with sometimes. It's something I have to use every single day. It is punctuation and I have always really struggled with apostrophes and when and when not to use them. Apostrophes follow loads of rules and I see them misused all of the time. Um, I know that sometimes I might misuse them as well, but I think today we should just clarify all of our doubts and use apostrophes properly once and for all. I really do think this video is going to help anybody who needs to write frequently. Anyone who's going to take an English exam like the IELTS or the FCE or even the CAE anyone who needs to write emails frequently, even text messages if you want to use correct grammar throughout text messages, school essays, native speakers and non-native speakers, whether you already speak English or you're learning English, this video is for absolutely everybody. As always, I love learning about your languages and your grammar as well, so do comment down below and tell me if you use apostrophes in your language and if you use them in the same way that we do in English. If you are interested in grammar and would like to learn more about grammar from private teachers, you can try italki. Italki is an online database which matches teachers to students. On that database, you can find native teachers, qualified teachers, community teachers that will help you with your conversation as well. I recently did a couple of classes with them to learn Indonesian. And as I said, that video is coming out. It's so exciting. It's just taken a little bit of work and I had an amazing experience. So if you're interested in putting into practice what you learn in this lesson or in other lessons, you can get $10 worth of italki credits for free when you make your first $10 italki purchase. So it's like a buy one, get one free on italki lessons. All you have to do is click on the link in the description box. That being said, let's get started with the punctuation lesson. So how's this lesson going to be structured? Well, first I'm going to be talking about the possessive case, the genitive case where apostrophes show possession or a relationship between two things. I'm then going to show you how apostrophes are used in verb, pronoun and some noun contractions. And then finally, I'll show you some extra miscellaneous contractions using apostrophes as well. Let's get started. So let's talk about the possessive case. Normally it uses apostrophe S, but there are some exceptions. This shows possession a relationship between two things, normally with one thing belonging to the other. For example, the ball of the dog, the dog's ball. So how do we use them with singular nouns? Well, we just add apostrophe S. For example, Lucy's car is orange, or I ate dinner at Will's house. But what happens if those singular nouns end in S? Now, this is a little bit of a cause for dispute in the English grammar world, but the most accepted form is to add apostrophe S as well. Now, this is disputed and some people will argue that we should just add the apostrophe. Whatever you choose to do, make it consistent. Choose one of those rules and be consistent with it. So at least it looks like you know what you're doing. So, I personally like to stick with the apostrophe S because I think it's the most traditional. For example, the actress's role was difficult or Jess's dog is called Mabel. Now with the other rule where they just put the apostrophe and they don't put the S, you will still treat it in spoken English as if you had that S there. So you will still say Jess's dog is called Mabel and the actress's role was difficult, even though the S is not there. It's complicated. So what about plural nouns? Well, regular plural nouns usually end in S. And for these, to show possession, you just need to add an apostrophe to the end of them. For example, my grandparents' house is cozy, or my friend's party was amazing. Now, this is why English is a little bit difficult. Because if I say these two sentences, my friend's party was amazing, or my friend's party was amazing, the first one is just referring to one friend, and the second one is referring to two friends. The apostrophe has changed place, 
but it sounds the same in spoken English. That's why you need to add a bit of context. In the words of Coldplay, nobody said it was easy. But what about those plural nouns that don't end in S? For example, children. Well, like the singular nouns, we just add apostrophe S. So, the children's clothing is to your left, or the women's party is starting. Now, these examples are less complicated because the plural and singular version of those nouns sound different on their own. But if you had a noun like sheep, you have one sheep, two sheep, well, it gets a bit more complicated because as we explained in the last example, it sounds the same. Okay, so we've cleared up where to use apostrophe and where to use apostrophe S. And the general consensus is add apostrophe S to everything apart from regular plural nouns that end in S. And for those, we just add the apostrophe. One important thing to note is that sometimes that second noun isn't necessary. You don't have to repeat yourself. For example, my house is smaller than my parents' house. I could just say, my house is smaller than my parents. The meaning is clear. I'm not trying to say that my house is smaller in size than my parents are in size. I'm trying to say that my house is smaller than my parents' house, which is bigger. The meaning is more or less clear, so we don't have to repeat ourselves with that second house. Now, what happens if one object has more than one owner? What if Ali and I were to buy a cat together? Would it be Lucy's and Ali's cat or Lucy and Ali's cat? Well, if we are both the owner, it would be Lucy and Ali's cat because the last person in the list takes the possessive form. However, if they are similar items that are owned individually, say I have a cat and Ali has a cat, it would be Lucy's and Ali's cats. I have cats, Ali has cats, Lucy's and Ali's cats. Okay, so that section on the possessive case should now be clear. If it's still not clear, you can rewatch the section and then go on to comment any doubts you have in the comments below and I will try and help, but I also really encourage you to help out each other as well. Now let's talk about apostrophes with verb contractions. I have got five of the most common situations in which verb contractions are used with apostrophes. So an apostrophe in a verb contraction basically shows missing letters. For example, I am, I'm. That apostrophe is showing that missing A and the space. It also gives you an indication on pronunciation. Example number one, verbs plus not. For example, do not, don't. Cannot, can't. Could not, couldn't. Should not, shouldn't. The second example, pronouns and will. I will, I'll. She will, she'll. They will, they'll. The third one, and this one can be slightly more complicated, pronouns and nouns with to be. For example, I am, I'm. You are, your. Will is, wills. So if you look at wills on its own, it could be showing the possessive case, or it could be showing a contraction of the verb to be. Will's watching television. It is Will's television. One of them is Will plus to be, and the other one is showing that the television is the television of Will. It is Will's television. One thing to note is with who, whose with the apostrophe is who is. Who plus to be. Who's there? Whose, spelt W-H-O-S-E, is the possessive form. Whose bag is this? It's very important to remember that, especially when you're writing in exams. It's an incredibly common mistake, especially amongst native speakers. I have absolutely made the mistake in the past, but I'm really going to try and not make the mistake in the future. Number four is pronouns plus the verb to have. I have, 
I've. She has. She's. So she's could be she is or she has. You have to look at the context. Note though, it would not be confused with the possessive because the possessive would be hers. The last one, number five, pronouns plus would or had. For example, I had, I'd. Now we would use this in situations like, I'd better go, I had better go. We wouldn't say, I'd a dog when I was 12, I had a dog when I was 12. And then with would, I would do that, I'd do that. In everyday conversation, the apostrophe D can be used with nouns, like, oh, mum would love that, mum would love that, or Sophie'd eat that, Sophie would eat that. So those are the five most common contractions. Now I'd just like to quickly cover three others that are not so common, but still really important and you will definitely come across them. So the first situation is when we talk about years, but we drop a couple of the numbers. For example, the summer of 69. We know that we're talking about 1969, but we might just want to say 69. It's more common to use this when describing the 1900s. The next situation is where we drop the words of, for example, to a clock. Originally it was of, or in the surname, a Donovan. It would have likely been of Donovan originally. The last situation is to show pronunciation in dialogue. For example, come on could be changed to come on and we'd use an apostrophe in that to give guidance on how to pronounce it. Come on is different to come on, isn't it? Right guys, that is it for my grammar lesson on apostrophes. I really hope you found it useful. I learned a great deal putting it together. Don't forget to check out italki, that link is in the description box. And also don't forget to connect with me on all of my social media. I've got my Facebook, my Instagram, and my Twitter. I'm doing some really exciting giveaways, so it's really worth following me on Instagram. I'm not gonna say any more, but there are some very exciting companies that are getting involved and will definitely help your English. And I will see you soon for another lesson. Mwah.